So hi, I am Prasad, and I'll be explaining our work, which is examining the gravitational wave lensing science in LIGO Virgo observation. This was done in collaboration with Ritesh, Mukesh, and Ajit. The gravitational waves, which are generated from astrophysical sources when they travel and come towards the Earth, on the way, if they encounter some massive objects, then this object can act as lenses and can cause gravitational wave lensing. And what, uh, what strong lensing does is that it can introduce multiple images as shown in the figure. There will be multiple copies of the gravitational wave getting formed. And this multi multiple images, when they arrive on Earth, there can be some time delays between them. That is, one of the image can arrive now, and the next image can arrive from hours later, or weeks later, or even months later. The time delay of, of lesser time delays arises because if the lens is very small, and that if the time delays will be more, if the lens is like much massive, and so strong lensing, the, what it does is that it, it results in multiple images, it results in time delays. And apart from this time delays, what strong lensing also does is that it introduces some kind of magnification. That is one of the images, uh, it, it can get amplified. And the other image, what is coming, its amplitude can get reduced. So overall, the gravitational waves which are generated and which are traveling towards the Earth, they can undergo lensing due to galaxy, galaxy clusters, and dark matter. And that can result in multiple images, time delays, and some kind of magnification or demagnification of the gravitational waves. So when this lensed gravitational waves arrive to us, at that time, the gravitational wave strain of this will be uh, modified by this particular expression. So whatever was the unlensed version, root mu times of it, when root when mu is the magnification. So because of this, the amplitude which we will feel, that will be quite louder. And when we will measure the distances, even our distance measurements gets biased because the true, whatever was the true distance, now the measured distance will be under root of mu of that. And even the mass measurements that we are doing, even the, that get biased. So overall, if there is a gravitational wave that has got lensed, there will be some biased estimates of its distance, its redshift, and also its mass. So the question is that has lensing been already observed? And this question has been a uh, lot spoken about. Because in the LIGO Virgo detections, we have measured like 100, 100 events, and there are a lot of black holes. And there are some groups which claim that the lensing signs are present already in the LIGO Virgo observation. And they claim that these lensing signs are there because in our galaxy, we have some black hole systems in which the low mass X ray binaries or the high mass X ray binaries are there, in which the black hole is accreting mass from the nearby companion. And when this mass falls onto it, there's, there's an accretion disk and there are EM emission. When we measure masses of this galactic black holes, they are just like 15 solar mass. We have not seen any galactic black hole above 15 solar mass in our galaxy. But in the LIGO Virgo, when, when the detect detector was operational and the gravitational wave was coming from this black hole mergers from cosmological distances, many of the black holes were like 30, 45, 30 solar mass, 35 solar mass, 40 solar mass, and so, so, so and like that. So in our galaxy, we were seeing only lighter black holes. The mass distribution was looking something like this, shown for log normal and Gaussian case. And for the LIGO, the mass distribution looked something like this. So people were like asking whether it is the lighter black holes which are merging and whether due to lensing, are we interpreting them to be massive ones? Was the question which many groups were putting forward. There was a series of papers written by Broadhurst et al, where they argued that the high mass black holes observed in the LIGO Virgo are an artifact of lensing bias. So what they claim is that, that the really it is only 10 or 15 solar mass black holes which are merging in the universe and it is we who are interpreting them to be 35 40 solar mass because lensing has happened and the signal has got amplified so their line of argument goes by this that they think that it is the lighter black holes that prevails throughout the universe just as in our galaxy the number of lens even depends upon lensing probability into merger rate and if the more if, if more number of if the merger rate is quite high in the universe then the number of lens events will be more. And because of this, the LIGO Virgo detections will see more number of lens events and more massive black holes. And they cooked up a particular formula called as the BDS model for this merger rate. And this is how their merger rate uh, looks like, which depends on two parameters and A and TH, which govern how this uh, merger rate will be looking and what will be its amplitude and how it will fall off. For example, this has to be interpreted in this particular way at a redshift of two. Uh, if, if the merger rate is 10 power 4, it means that at a redshift of 2, if I take a giga per sec cube volume uh, in, an, in a year's time, around 10,000 black holes will be merging. At a redshift of 1, if it is 10 power 3, it means that at a, at a redshift of 1, if I take a giga per sec cube volume, then in one year, 
a thousand black holes will be merging. So th this is what is the merger rate. And they proposed a very high merger rate at higher redshift, which is much higher than even the typical star formation rates. And they proposed this so that they can support that many of these events which are coming from high uh, redshifts can get lensed and those black holes will look massive. And here in our work, we are trying to see whether this model is consistent with current observation, whether this model is consistent with the stochastic gravitation wave background, and whether this model can give rise to black holes which are much higher as seen in the LIGO. So we are trying to check that. The first study what we carried out was the stochastic gravitation wave background. In these black holes which are present at the cosmological distances at higher redshift, when they merge, the gravitational wave which comes towards us will be very faint. But since many of these black holes are getting merged, the, the signal su superimposes incoherently and we will have a stochastic gravitational wave background, the amplitude of which can be calculated by this particular expression, which depends upon the merger rate R, it depends upon this quantity dE by dF, which is the energy present in per unit frequency. And this can be, and formula exists for this particular quantity, because we know what is dE by dF for late in spiral merger and ring down phases from waveform models. So once we substitute the merger rate here and use this dE by dF and integrate it across the cosmological distance, we can estimate what is the gravitational wave uh, background energy density, that, that is this quantity. And that is what is plotted here. Y-axis is this omega and x-axis is the frequency. And the LIGO's detection curves are here, O3 run and the design sensitivity. For, for some particular model parameters, we see that the curve is above the LIGO's sens sensitivity. It means that this particular, uh, for this particular parameters, the stochastic gravitational amplitude is much higher and should have been observed in the O3 run, but we have not observed them. It means that for this model parameters are not valid and uh, because they should have been observed by now. Only those which lie below this O3 curve are valid, like this one, AR equal to 600 and TH 1.5. The better way to quantify this is to calculate the SNR for different model parameters of what was proposed, that's AR and TH, which are the major rate model parameters. And when we see this SNR, we see that, and this SNR is plotted here. Those, for all these events which are shown in this, for all these parameters which are shown here, the SNR shoots about two, and they should have been detected by now. Since we don't detect them, we rule out all these model parameters. Only low AR and this TH range exist. So by doing this stochastic gravitational background study, we eliminate most of the model parameters which are not valid. And then the second study which we do is that we try to simulate the lens black hole population. In this what we do is that we, we generate 1 million samples of black holes which are low, low, which are lighter, that is around 10 to 20 solar mass from the log normal mass distribution. We generate this 1 million black holes and we distribute them at the cosmological redshifts according to the BDS model. That is, according to this model, we distribute the 1 million black holes at this redshift following this particular model. And after we distribute them, out of this 1 million models, we classify which one are lensed and which one are not lensed by using the optical depth. And the events which are lensed, we allot them some kind of magnification. The magnifications we assign using SIS model, and the magnification formula is 1 is equal to 1 by 1 plus y, where y is the impact parameter. When the gravitational wave is coming, if it, is li if it lies within the Einstein radius of the lens, then it gets strongly lensed. And if it is lies outside the Einstein radius, then it will be weakly lensed. It depends upon the impact parameter. If the impact parameter is less than one, it will be strongly lensed. If it is greater than one, it will be weakly lensed. So we draw the magnifications from this particular formula and assign to the lensed events. And after these magnifications are assigned, we, we see, we ask the question whether the lighter black holes, one million of them distributed at this redshift, when we assign them some magnification after classifying them as lensed, whether that mass distribution of this black holes, will it be massive and will it look like the LIGOs one? This is what the answer comes out. This is the log normal uh, black hole mass distribution, the true one, where most of the black holes are lighter, 10 to 20 solar mass. And this biased one after, up, applying, up, after assigning them some magnification, this is the biased one, the green one. And the GWTC3 catalog is the LIGO's uh, O3 run catalog. And we see that this bias distribution, that is the lens black hole population that we generated from this blue one, this lens ones don't look like that of the LIGO. The p value of this both distributions, uh, when we compare, it comes out that it is quite less. So it means that in the LIGO Virgo detections, whatever we are seeing, they are not the lens black holes. It is in, indeed 35, 40, or 50 solar mass black holes which are merging. 
they are not 10 or 20 solar mass black holes which are getting lensed and we are interpreting them to be massive. That's what it comes out from our study. So we also take a second approach. In this approach, what we do is that in earlier, we, we tried, we calculated the magnification using, we calculated the magnification using impact parameter. Based on the impact parameter, whether it is less than one, we are assigning them some magnif weak, strong magnification. If, if impact parameter was greater than one, we were assigning them some weakly, weak lensing magnifications. But in this case, we are trying to draw magnifications from some high resolution ray tracing simulation. There are some groups which have performed this high, high resolution ray tracing simulation over cosmological scales, and they have given magnification distribution data. And this data have been fitted with some parametric formulas. And we use those formulas to obtain the magnifications. And this particular, when, so what we do is that we take 1 million black holes, which are lighter, log normal distribution, 10 to 20 solar mass kind of one. We distribute them at the cosmological scales. And then we draw the magnification using this particular formulas for different redshift and we assign them this magnifications. And then we see because of this magnification, how their mass changes. And these are our results which comes out. These are shown for different model parameters of the major rate model AR and TH for distributing them across the cosmological distances. We see that for whatever AR and TH we have considered here, the GWTC3 catalog, which is the LIGOS detected one, and the lensed events which we simulated by taking low mass black holes, applying the magnification and the lens versions when we simulated, the lens versions of these black holes don't match with that of the LIGOS GWTC3 catalog and the p-values are quite less for different thing values. So overall it comes out that we were trying to check that for which AR and TH of the majorate model parameters will the lens simulation population that we generate, it will look close to the LIGO and for which it will look farther. Overall, we found out that for any value of AR and TH that we took, it was never looking close to the LIGO's uh, detections. So to summarize, there were claims done by some groups saying that the LIGO Virgo detections, many of the black holes were lensed because in our galaxy, all the black holes were 10 to 15 solar mass, but LIGO, many black holes were 35 to 40 solar mass and they had proposed a merger rate model. So stochastic gravitational wave background is, is, is tightly connected to the merger rate because more is the merger, more will be the amplitude of the stochastic background. So using this stochastic gravitational background, we eliminated several parameters of the merger rate model. Then we tried some lensing studies in which we took lighter black holes and then we supplied them some magnification and we, and we generated the lens population and we compared that lens population with the LIGOS detection. And it comes out that the, the preliminary studies that the bias mass distribution that we obtain is not consistent with the LIGO Virgo detection. It comes out that from our preliminary investigation, the black hole masses observed in the LIGO Virgo are indeed real black holes of those 35, 40 solar mass which are merging. They are not lighter black holes which we are interpreting them to be massive ones because of lensing effect. In our future, our goal is that we want to extend our studies with lensing models like the SIE lens model or the NFW lens model and we will be obtaining mass distribution with this particular lens models and seeing whether they come close to the LIGO Virgo detection. We will be also calculating the number of doubles and number of lens events to make our results concrete in this regard. So overall, to say that lensing will be something that we will be expecting in the future or in the coming years or also in the next decade. But as of now, in the LIGO Virgo detections, the lensing effects are not there. Yeah. Thank you. Any question? So, uh, are, so this bump that you are talking about around 35, 40 solar masses, isn't this explainable by, uh, say, stellar evolution models uh, or something like that? It can be explained by the stellar evolution models because there are some groups which have tried to I mean, say that because uh, at, uh, the, the stars which are 80 to 90 solar mass around, they undergo this uh, pair instability supernova. So many stars which try to become massive or which are massive tend to somehow halt and then they are, when they explode, they become this lighter black holes of 35. It can be explained by that, but this, but the, the groups which are claiming that the LIGO Virgo detections have lensing are not just concerned about this 35, 40 solar mass speed. They're concerned about all the black holes, which are above like 15 to 20 solar mass, because in our galaxy, they claim that the black holes that we see are just 15 to 20 solar mass and the LIGO Virgo detections, many are at 35, 40, the peak is there, but even there, many are at 50, 60 and all that. So massive black holes, we are getting it in the GW data. But in the EM observation, we have not seen it. So that was their line of argument, which okay. made okay. them.
go okay. for this. Thanks. Any other question? Uh, just to understand, like uh, in the lensed events, that's sort of given as four out of hundred or something like that, right? Uh, the, the number of lensed events, if you observe hundred GW events, is like four or something like that. That's the standard uh, number of events people give, right? That's the standard number people give. Yeah, the fraction is very less, zero point one percent or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, uh, out of these events, when you calculated, uh, uh, like you, you had uh, all the events plotted as well as you're comparing what your simulation is giving. If uh, if your points match somewhere, mm -hmm. does that mean it is a uh, it is a lens event? No. Is, no. Okay. Just by one mass like matching with the another thing in the LIGO, I can't say it. Overall, the distribution has to match. Okay. So according to the LIGO Virgo collaboration, as of now, none of the events are lensed because they did their study. And they claim that none of the events are lensed according because they also did the posterior overlap of the parameters whether for different combination of events out of this hundred whether any event can be pair of the other event which came after some time delay but they found that none were existing but still people claim that there are there is possibility of lensing has already been there in the data because of the high mass events which has been seen and we are trying to like target that particular thought process any other question? Okay, so let's thank Prasad. Thanks for the talk.